So when you look at the centenarians, the longest lived people, the blue zones and all that, it's amazing because their health span comes within about 30 months of when they actually pass away. That means they're healthy for the vast majority of their life. I mean, that is what we all, that's what we could all hope for. That's what I want at least. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to improve overall health. And one of the ways that we can do this is through intermittent fasting. Welcome back, everybody. Appreciate you joining me here today on this Cabral concept. I want to share with you, if you don't already know about it, if you're not aware about it, there is a specific fast that they are using and has been recommended for dementia, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, and many other brain and nervous system-based disorders. Now, the nice thing is, though, there's actually overflow and benefits that you can get even if you don't have those. Please also keep in mind, Alzheimer's does not happen overnight. It is a process of 20 to 30 plus years of brain-based aging. And I'll tell you right now, it shows signs in the rest of the body. So if you're someone dealing with high cholesterol, cardiovascular issues, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar, those are signs, absolute signs, that that can be happening to the brain as well. So I'm going to share with you just a couple details about this. We've been talking a lot about the brain and Alzheimer's and different uh, items this week. And the reason is, and I, I shared this on yesterday's show, I do hope you tune into yesterday's show as well. Uh, I'll link that up, of course, in the show notes today. Uh, the show notes will be at stephencabral.com slash 2736 today. stephencabral.com slash 2736. If you want the three big takeaways, uh, plus the fasting details, plus the Alzheimer protocols, uh, and the end of Alzheimer's three-part series that I did previously. Again, these are all free, but I, I taught this this week inside of a much more advanced course called High Performance Health. You can find out more about that if you'd like. I'll put that in the show notes. It's just highperformancehealth.org. But it, basically, it's trying to help people to not only visualize, but actually begin to implement how to live past 100 healthily. So the goal is to, yes, increase lifespan. We know humans can live to 100. We know that. We actually know that they can live to 120. We, people, there's so-called biohackers out there saying that, oh, I'm going to live to 150. But, but you have no basis for that. Like, no one's ever done it before. There are some obscure stories that there was someone in China who lived for over 200 years, but we don't actually know that. Like, we don't know if that is true because there was no real birth certificate saying that this person was 220 years. Now, I've seen photos of the individual and they, they looked old. There's no doubt about it. Maybe they lived to 120. Maybe they lived to 125. We don't really know. But we've ne we don't have on record anyone ever living past 120-ish years old, right? Like 123, somewhere around there. Okay, so saying you want to live to 120, 150 is great. And, and we might be able to. To be honest with you, the whole point of high-performance health and, and other things that I'm teaching is we need to increase lifespan now, right? Get people to 100 plus. But if you, if you have then, like let's say you're 70 years old right now. Okay, so if we get you to 100, that's 30 more years of using machine-based learning, artificial intelligence to be able to then figure out how to extend lifespan. And, and I think we can do that I want, over the next 30 years. My colleagues um, who are do the research on this are fairly certain we can do it within 15 to 20. Some say 10. Most are fairly certain we're going to figure it out within 15 to 20 of how to basically reverse biological age, reset the clock about 10 to 20 years, and then find out new technology in the next 10 to 20 years, reverse it then the next, another 10 to 20 years. We'll see. It, it's very interesting, but here's the issue. We want to increase health span at the same time. So we don't want people, because again, um, I'm fortunate enough to be able to see hundreds of thousands of people you know, every single year within our practice, all of their labs, all of those great things. And, and I think these people a lot of times are, you know, at least they're more aware, they're trying to pay more attention to their overall health. But Here's the thing. I just know that the majority of the people, they're, they're not well by the time they get in their 50s. Autoimmune issues, cardiovascular issues, blood pressure issues, type 2 diabetes, not at the ideal healthy body weight. There's, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of suffering going on. So our goal, though, is to increase health span, not just lifespan. So that means if you live 90 years, well, you didn't make it to 100, but living 90 years is pretty amazing as well. So let's say you live 90 years, and 89 and a half of those years, are healthy years. 
That's really what we're looking for. So when you look at the centenarians, the longest lived people, the blue zones and all that, it's amazing because their health span comes within about 30 months of when they actually pass away. That means they're healthy for the vast majority of their life. That's, I mean, that is what we all, that's what we could all hope for. That's what I want at least. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to improve overall health. And one of the ways that we can do this is through intermittent fasting. Now I have a lot of shows on intermittent fasting. You can find them at stephencabral.com slash IF. They're all free. And they take you through the different phases because there's not one form of intermittent fasting. Some people say to do one meal a day. Some people say to do a 16-8. Some people say to only do 12 hours. Some people say you shouldn't intermittent fast because there's too much stress in the body. I am one of the people who like to talk about bioindividuality. I've been a practitioner for a long time, and before that, I was sick for a decade, for 10 years. So I had to learn a lot just to try to get myself well. And through that, through that experimentation, that knowledge, that learning, the, the degrees that I got, I'm able to hopefully provide a little bit more of an unbiased look because I know not everyone's the same. But what I can share with you is this. It's almost unanimous that everybody believes in a 12-hour intermittent fast overnight. Here's the issue. Yes, there's a small fraction of people who can't do that based on hypoglycemia, based on blood sugar-based issues, but most people can't. And so we're just going to look at the most people, right? Like 99 out of 100. Okay. So what does that mean then? It means that you need to pick 12 hours overnight because if you're in bed eight hours, that makes it easy because then you just need four more. So you could do like a few hours before bed, maybe like two, right? Or one. And then you can do like two or three when you wake up. But here's the issue. Many people right now are eating all the way up to essentially bedtime or maybe an hour before. And then they're just skipping breakfast in the morning. It's one of the worst ways to do intermittent fasting. One of the worst ways. And it's been shown that the food isn't even out of your stomach for about three hours. Okay, after you have dinner. And most people are making dinner their largest meal of the day when really you want that to be the smallest one of the day. Now I know I don't make it the smallest one of the day. Most people in a Western-based culture don't make it the smallest one of the day because it's when you sit down with your family. It's when you enjoy. I get it. I understand. And you might say, well, it's been done like that forever. Agreed, except that dinner was always way earlier, right? And when you look in the blue zones, it was much earlier as well. But I'm not going to get into all of that today. What I want to share with you is this, though is that uh, Dr. Bresden uh, wrote an amazing book. Again, I'll link that up here today. I've done uh, all podcasts on uh, the three-part Alzheimer's testing protocols, and I've also gone over the MEN protocols, and then I get much more in-depth inside of high-performance health as well. But one of the things they shared was a 12-3 intermittent fast. So you take your 12 hours, all right? That's your minimum. So 12 hours, but it has to be three hours before bed. And that is what they found to be much more beneficial for the brain and the overall health of the body. Remember, it's almost impossible to have a healthy body and not have a healthy brain. It really is. Like, and the reason why I mentioned high cholesterol earlier is that a lot of people with an APOE4 genotype, they don't do well with high cholesterol. And you have all these, you know so-called health practitioners out there telling people that it's okay to eat tons of saturated fat, lots of cholesterol, it's no big deal, it's the precursor to hormones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, when they don't realize that 26% of the population are much more prone to Alzheimer's, dementia, and other brain-based issues, as well as cardiovascular issues, specifically from not being able to clear cholesterol and lipid, specifically LDL, low-density lipoproteins, from their blood. So be careful about non-nuanced information where one where a person tells you that there's one best way to do things. Be very careful about that. I understand that some people do better and totally fine with a lot of saturated fat in their diet, but that doesn't mean everybody does, okay? And so we want to look at that very, very specifically. And you can test your APOE genotype. Um, I'll link up what's called a biological age test below. You can find your uh, biological age versus your chronological age, and you always want your biological age to be younger than your chronological age, and you want your uh, biological age uh, to ideally be 0.95 as a rate of aging or less. And I'll link that up, uh, test up below. I do that myself and um, I try to improve it every six months to the best of my ability. Okay, so here's what I want to share with you. The 12-3 fast, we can make it even better, but I want to share with you, it was three hours before you go to bed. I think that this is absolutely crucial and it's part of my 3-2-1 sleep formula. So three hours before bed, you stop eating two hours before bed for that sleep formula, 
you stop drinking any water so that hopefully you don't wake up during the middle of the night, have to urinate, etc. And then the one hour before is no blue light, no screens, nothing like that. You dim the lights in the house. Ideally, you put on more amber lights or you put on blue blocking glasses uh, like the Vivarays that I've uh, shared before. I can link those up below too. And all of those are great ways to do it. Now, I will share with you this. One of the reasons why this is effective, not just a numbers game, right? 12-3 sounds nice and all those things, is that first, you want the food out of your stomach before you go to bed. Second is that it actually improves deep sleep and REM sleep because it's not just the number of hours of sleep that you get. It's actually the quality of your sleep. So if you're not tracking your sleep now, you want to get 90 minutes of deep sleep a night and you want to get two plus hours of REM sleep a night. Deep sleep, think about that as rejuvenating for the body and REM sleep, think of that as rejuvenating for the brain. Now, they both help with both, but that is the way to look at it. So if you're not getting that good quality of sleep, one of the reasons could be is that you're eating too close to bed. So the best thing that I've found actually to improve my overall sleep, so improve my HRV, improve my deep sleep, improve my REM sleep, uh, drop my breath rate, drop my heart rate, like all of those things, drop my body temperature, is to stop eating three to four hours before bed. The more hours, believe it or not, before you go to bed, the better it is for your sleep. And that's because your energy is not being used for digestion, but rather now that energy can go used towards repair and it's not keeping you awake or at least awake even at a light sleep level. Highest recommendation I can give you, try to get to bed uh, as many hours before midnight as you can. That's another tip, especially for Alzheimer's, because it's going to improve your cortisol levels. Your cortisol will be down and your melatonin will be up. But in an ideal world, if you can just get to bed by 10, waking by 6, that's going to be good for the majority of the people right around there, again, between 7 and 9 hours of sleep a night. Uh, what I want to share with you is just a couple more things. So if you can, try to finish that dinner by 6 p.m. Then if you finish dinner by 6 p.m., you can get into bed by 9, 30, 10, when cortisol is lowest. I talk about that in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. And then after that, you can wake up at what? Well, let's say it's six. Okay. So four hours, you stop being at six, you wake up at six, went to bed at 10, let's say that's already what? 12 hours. So you got in your 12 hours, even if you wake up 6am. Now let's say you don't eat until 8am. You just went 14 hours. So now you got in an easy 14 hour intermittent fast. You can start to have breakfast to break, break that fast to start your day when stress levels might be rising. Super easy, very effective. In my practice, that is what seems to work best for the majority of people. Stop eating by six, pretty good compromise. Now I know one night a week, you might be out to dinner, understand, right? Nobody's perfect and you don't have to be. That's the truth. But for the majority of the time, stop eating by six, bed by 10, wake around six, 6.30, somewhere around there. Eat starting around 8 o'clock in the morning. You get in a nice 14-hour fast. It's a great combination. Now, if you want to do a longer fast once or twice a week, I have a podcast on that. I'll link all those up. But again, they're at stephencabral.com slash IF for all the intermittent fasting shows. And today's show is actually going to be at stephencabral.com slash 2736. That's where the research will be. That is where Dr. Breslin's book will be. That's where my podcast on the men protocol will be, uh, the biological age, and so much more. So thank you, everybody. Have an amazing rest of the day. I hope this was helpful. Do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.